position has always been. Each member was personally recruited by Commander Waldin Lacrush, the leader of the Six Squad organization. The leader of the Six Squad organization. They must have received the same orientation that he has. Six Squad Alpha was supposed to be the paramount, the pinnacle of passion and perseverance. We are supposed to be the first in a long line of small squads that could be positioned and easily deployed around the globe to respond to any manner of situations where help is requested. It's alright guys, we'll get it all straightened out when we get back. Rooster continues to try to de-escalate the tension between his squad mates. If Rana could control her temper, we might not be in this situation. I'm not so sure that this wasn't an attempt at sabotage. Scorpion jabs at the open wound in Rana's already wounded spirits. Shut up, Scorpion! Rana says as she stands up and gets in Scorpion's face. Commodore is no longer interested in their rivalry. He scoots past them both and joins Sir Rock Chan in the cockpit. You are out there slashing and shooting too. Only you are trying to kill the Russians. Even Chan and Rooster were only wounding the enemy. Malvade is still pulling your strings and I will no longer put my life on the line with his hands in this. Scorpion has been pulling away from the team for months now, and the day's events have drawn him even further away. I would never take orders from him again. He humiliated me, and now no lab in the country will work with me. She replies angrily. If there's any of us who can't be trusted, it's you. Nobody knows who you are or anything about you. And that stupid vocal adjuster is starting to get on my damn nerves. Scorpion is already turned away and plops down in his seat close enough to the front to hear what's going on in the cockpit. Rana backs off as she can tell that no one will continue this discussion with her. She rolls her eyes and returns to her seat across from Rooster. Rooster tries his best to make eye contact with any of his team members, but all of them are preoccupied with other thoughts. So I guess nobody's coming to Zazby's with me, huh? Rooster folds his arms and flops back in his chair like a five-year-old upset about not being able to watch his favourite TV show. The rest of the ride is almost silent. The day's events have shaken most of the team in one way or another. The team reaches their central operating base and apprehensively prepares to exit the special aircraft as they hear Commander Walden Lacrush's voice pouring in through the hangar. Are you all okay? Commander Lacrush waits at the bottom of the ramp for his primary squad. I've already smoothed things over with the Russian embassy. You shouldn't have to worry about them pursuing us for this misunderstanding. Scorpion scoffs underneath his helmet as their commander tries to ease the spirits of his team. The commander's face clearly displays his disappointment. His warm and calm tone is very uncharacteristic and this troubles most of the team. Six Squad Alpha is not supposed to make these types of mistakes. They are supposed to be the cream of the crop. They would feel more at ease if their commander was screaming and cursing instead of hurt and disappointed. They can tell they've let him down. We have no injuries or casualties to report, sir. Commodore responds as he stops at the bottom of the ramp. Scorpion brushes past the two of them and heads for the exit, while Rana and Rooster remain behind Commodore awaiting their next orders. So Rock Chan also exits the Siek with his long rifle over his shoulder and heads out of the hangar without waiting for further instructions. That's good. Commander Lacrush responds and delivers a sigh of relief. He looks over his shoulder as the door closes behind Scorpion and Sir Rock Chan. Follow me, Captain. I'll start the debriefing with you. Over the next couple of hours, the team all gave detailed descriptions of what happened earlier that day. Then Commander Lacrush calls for a meeting with them all before they are to be released for the day. Surprised that their escapade had not been broadcasted all over the news, everyone meets in the conference room more relaxed. Everyone besides Scorpion has changed into their street clothes and is prepared to call it a day. The room is silent, like a dysfunctional family reunion dinner. The Commander does not make them suffer in patience long. As he walks into the small room and approaches the head of the sturdy wooden table, his team stiffens up and sits up straight. Rooster and Rana sit to his left as he approaches a short end of the table. Komodo sits across on the far end of the table and Sir Rock Chan sits on his right in the chair closest to him. Scorpion chooses to stand in the far corner of the room behind Komodo and Sir Rock Chan with his arms folded. Commander Lacrush sits down a thin folder on the table and slides it past Rooster to Rana. 
Go over that and sign it. We'll start your suspension and retraining tonight. Lacrache says and then addresses the rest of the group. What happened today was a result of miscommunication. I take full responsibility for not disseminating the information properly to you. The only reason that Palia is getting suspended is because she opened fire on those Russians first. Based on the information that I've gathered from you all, as well as video from CX Surveillance, this seemed to be the point that could have negated the situation. Lacrosse stops for a moment and takes a deep breath. He looks past the members sitting at the table in Scorpion's direction and leans over the table and presses his palms into the woods. I thought we were a team. He pauses again and looks around the table at his super-powered crew. We are, sir. It's just stressful. Not seeing the results of our work out there? Sir Rock Chan speaks up. I know we've only been a team for a year or so, but it seems like we have all these powers to help us hand out baby wipes and put on bandages. I see. You desire action? The crush asks. Rusa looks up from the table at him and nods along with Sir Rock Chan while Rana continues to pour over her packet. I assure you that you will have it. It may be sooner than expected. The rest of the team perks up and Scorpion takes a few steps towards the table. The early results from the analysis on the samples that you brought back are giving us some strange readings, Rana. He calls and she looks up from her packet to him. If you want to earn your normal wage while on your suspension from the field, you're more than welcome to take to the lab. They could really use your help. Rana nods and buries her head back into her packet. Hopefully with your help we can get the information that we need before it's too late. Too late for what? Komodo asks, inquiring about the commander's previous allusion to action. As you all know, we have been gathering information around the world on many different subjects. We've discovered what we think is a new way to predict natural phenomenon more accurately. Earthquakes, freak fissures causing destructive tidal waves, ionic imbalances in the atmosphere causing catastrophic lighting storms. We will be able to predict some of these occurrences weeks in and better protect the civilian populace from harm. The commander's passion begins to stir up as he speaks about protecting the people on this planet that we share. There's so much good that we can do on this planet if we all just come together. This team that we have here can make a statement to the world. There can be a fresh director from us to marshal in with our example. The human race has not reached its full potential yet. They will see what a greater existence this world could manage through a spirit of service and support for your fellow man.